Hello, algebra students. Mr. Lawrence here, and we are going to learn a new type of factoring today. This is called factor by grouping, and it's super easy because if you know how to GCF, all you have to do is GCF three times. Yeah, that's all you have to do. So, let's see here. Okay, problem number one says 12x cubed plus 3x squared plus 20x plus 5. Well, I need to factor that by grouping, and I'm having some pen troubles here. I don't know why my pen is behaving so strangely here. I'm having some real troubles. Very strange. Okay, let's try this again. Wow, it's really out of control. Okay. Okay, I'm going to give this a shot. I tried to do something, but it's working a little bit better now. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this four-term polynomial and I'm going to group it into two sets of terms. Um, you only use this method when there's four terms or if there's six terms, but you don't run into six-term polynomials very often, at least not in high school math. So the only rule about grouping them is you want to make sure you have some kind of GCF going on. So I'm going to group these two. And I'm going to group these two. And did you notice I grabbed that plus sign there? I have to put a new plus sign here. It, it might not seem like a big deal, but it really is, especially if that third term is negative. So I'm going to grab the plus sign inside the quantity, and then I'll put a plus sign between the quantities. Now I'm going to GCF this first quantity. It looks like there's going to be a 3x squared is going to be my GCF, only looking at these two terms. When I factor out a 3x squared, I'm going to be left with a 4x uh, plus a 1 right? And now I'm going to do the same thing over here, only the GCF is 5, and when I factor out a 5, I'm going to get a 4x plus a 1. Now if you look, the factors, the factors of this first group are the 3x squared and the 4x plus 1, right? And then over here in the second group, there's a 5, but then there's another 4x plus 1, factors, it's a common factor. I'm going to factor it out again. Remember I said GCF three times? Here I gcf once, there I gcf twice. Now my third GCF is going to be the 4x plus 1. I'm going to factor it out of both quantities. I'm going to factor out of here, leaving a 3x squared. I'm going to factor it out of here, leaving a positive 5. And there you go. We just factored by grouping. All right, let me do a second example for you. Apologize if there's lots of noise. My wife's doing something with the refrigerator. It's okay, though. All right, so I'm going to group. Um, I've got to group these. So I see some common factors here. I'm going to group these, and then I'm going to add them together. Okay, so my GCF looks like it's going to be a 7x squared. And I'm going to have a 3x minus 4, right? If I factor out a 7x squared, here, do you notice my signs go positive, negative, but here they go negative, positive. I'm not going to factor out a positive number. I'm going to factor out a negative number. I'm going to factor out a negative 2, leaving me a 3x minus a 4. Ooh, did you hear that? I repeated the 3x minus a 4. This quantity is a common factor. So I'm going to factor out the 3x minus 4, and what will be left here, the 7x squared, and then what will be left here, the minus 2. And there you go. Okay? Um, all right. So I want you to try these two on your own. Go ahead and pause the video, and I will show you my solutions in just a minute. All right. If you haven't tried them yet, please make sure you do. So group like this and my GCF here is going to be a 9x cubed and I'll be left with a 5x minus 1 and then here I'm going to factor out a 2x I think leaving me a 5x minus 1. Did you hear it? I repeated myself and so I'll have a 5x minus 1 in one quantity and a 9x cubed plus a 2x. Uh oh I fooled you. I'm not done. There's a GCF in the second quantity. Do you see it? Do you see it? 
It's an x. I'm going to factor the x out of this quantity, but I'm not going to stick it in the middle here. I'm going to put it way out front. So I'll have an x, then I'll have the 5x minus 1, and then this quantity will be a 9x squared plus 2. And now the expression is completely factored. Yeah, you always have to be looking to see if you can factor more. Okay, if you haven't tried number eight, please or number four, please make sure you do. All right, gonna factor here. It's supposed to be a four there. I can't really see it anymore. And then I'm gonna factor here, grabbing that sign and then sticking a plus sign in between. I don't want to transform this into a double distribution problem. Looks like my GCF is going to be a 3x to the 4th, and that would leave a 6x minus 1. Here, I'm going to factor out a negative 5x squared. Why? Because I don't have the same sign order. I have positive negative and then negative positive. So I'm going to factor out that, and that will leave me with a 6x minus a 1. Cool, cool. The 6x minus 1 shows up twice. I'll factor it out. And then I'm going to have a 3x to the 4th, not the squared, 3x to the 4th. Let me rewrite that. It just looks bad. 3x to the 4th minus 5x squared. And guess what? I'm not done yet. There's a GCF here. Looks like it's the next squared. So I'm going to bring the x squared out front. Do a 6x minus 1. There will be a 3x squared left minus a 5. Now, if this ended up being like 4x squared minus 9 in here, then I would have to factor by the difference of perfect squares yet again. I'd, be, I'd continue to factor. But for right now, that's the end of the problem. All right, that's it for the video. You'll get some practice with this on Max Math Excel. If you didn't check the closure video, I got it, or the closure document, I have it around here somewhere. There we go. Watch video on factoring by grouping and Excel assignment. All right, make sure you're you're coming into my office hours and asking for help. Mr. Lawrence signing off. Have a good night, everybody.